Play for that normal. Um, uh, let's see if I can remember. Red goes to occlusion. <clears throat> Green goes to roughness, I think it was. And blue goes to metallic. I think that's correct. <laughs> we'll find out soon. <clears throat> Let's save that. Alright. <clears throat> Let's open up our uh, object again. And I think that's okay. Alright, so we have all of our pieces, well, we actually don't have all the pieces. There is one more piece for that stairwell that we need to uh, to work on. Let's do that quickly before we start putting the complete stairwell together. Uh, the complete square railing section together. And they're the, um, the decorative pieces that go on the top of the uh, ends of the, the four columns on the ends. I'm going to jump back into Max. I'm going to exit isolation mode. I'm just going to quickly save my file here yeah, because I don't want to lose any work. We will get this railing section finished today in Unreal. We will. I'm determined. Okay, so there is only one more piece of geometry that needs to be added to that and I've got to remember where I put it. Uh, okay, it's these. One, th these are decorative pieces that go on the end. Now, I'm just going to, again, go into isolation mode here. Again, this texture is the original texture and it's really awful. I don't know what I was thinking when I made these, uh, this model up. I, when I textured the model up, it's just horrible. Horrible. Let's see if we can improve this. Let's start by making sure that our verts are welded together. They're not going to be. I know that because it's in mesh mode. Before I do that, I'm going to convert it to poly. Uh, now I'm going to make sure that all of our verts are welded. And I'm just going to keep pulling it up until I get it just before... Um, just before 0 0.5, so I'll take it to... Wrong one. 0.49. I'm going to go into uh, sub object mode now. Make sure that my pieces are all attached and they are. Now let's see, how do we want to texture this up? We can, uh, I think we going with two colors here would be really interesting. So what we could do is we could make uh, the base and this wood and we could make this top piece gold. And again, we're using if we use that gold metallic paint, it'll help to blend this into the rest of the um, the props that we're using in the building. So the railings and that ironwork, that gate that we're using to, in the entryway. So let's do that. Let's jump into our material editor here. And let's assign this color to the top piece. And let's uh, select both of these pieces and assign another plain color to that. So we're using, we're going to be rendering out another material ID map. Before we do that, I'm just going to detach this top piece. Now I want to unwrap it. So an unwrap UVW again. Again, I'm going to turn off my uh, map seams here. Okay. I'm just going to. I'm going to play with my mapping here. I'll do a flatten mapping to begin with and see what that gives us. Now I'm going to try to do a, a um, let's try diamond mapping. That's a new mapping mode that was introduced in Max. 
No, I don't like that. I actually think with this we're going to go with a box map. I'm just going to move those off to the side. Okay, let's uh, unwrap this bottom piece now. And again, I'm going to turn off map seams. You can see that's a bit of a mess as far as an unwrap goes. Uh, we're going to do the same thing again, I think. We'll try box mapping. And that should work as well. All right, let's start uh, getting ourselves organized. Let's scale this back a little bit. So, uh, actually, let's leave this the way it is. It takes up most of our UV 0 to 1 space. So I'm just going to uh, collapse my stack. And I'm going to reattach that top piece now. Now I'm going to throw down another unwrap. Again, I'm going to turn off my map seams. Alright, now let's uh, select the top piece here. And we can scale this one down because uh, as far as uh, UV space goes, it's a small part of the model. So let's scale it down and move it into this corner here. So we'll scale it up until it takes up most of the space we have left here. And that should be good. Okay, now we can collapse our stack again. Uh, we're going to be calling this one Wooden Urn. So let's start by doing our render to texture so we can render out our um, material ID map. So map channel 1, we're adding a diffuse map. And we will pop it into its own folder as well. Or wooden urn. And we're going to be saving it as a PNG file, so that's good. Let's render out our material ID map now. Okay. And now again, I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to assign just a plain color to everything. And I'm going to export this as an FBX. And we're just going to call it wooden urn. Now actually before I actually do this export, I'm going to do a reset on the export before I forget. Like I said, it won't matter for Substance Painter, but it will matter for Unreal, so... Let's export it now that we've reset the export. And we're just going to call it Wooden Urn. We'll jump into Substance Painter, we'll save our project here. And create a new one. Wooden urn, wooden urn. We're going to add the uh, material ID map that we just exported. Okay. With select our ID map here. Again, we've got one texture, which is what we want. Let's start with the uh, cherry wood, I think. So, American cherry is the one that we want. Let's remove this blank top layer here. And 
before we do anything um, else, I'm just looking at the model and trying to work out what's going on. Maybe that our um, we may have flipped uh, normal, so I'm just going to jump back into Max here. No, our normals are not flipped. Alright, let me jump back into Substance. Let's go try and work out why it's uh, looking like that. I'm going to play with the texture first, actually. Let's change our rotation to 90 degrees. And unlock it and change our scaling here a bit. I want to turn off the hard information. Why is it doing that? I'm just not sure why I'm getting this color difference here. I'll try and work out what's going on. I'm wondering if we're having a problem with the uh, alpha again. So I've noticed with uh, a lot of these textures from the original models, they have an alpha channel which somehow has been incorporated into the model itself, and it shouldn't be. I just, I'm trying to work out why the texture is appearing correctly on the lid here, but not on the body. It's looking wrong. And normally I'd say it's, it's the normals are the wrong way around, but I know that they're not. Hmm. Hmm. Then quickly jump back into Max. I'm going to collapse my stack again. I'm also just going to turn on uh, Shaded here. I'm not going to see anything because I'm using a 100% illuminated texture. This is a problem. I'm just going to go back to constant colours. See, there's something going on here. I'm just looking through my modifier stack here to see if there's anything I can apply that will um, give me a better idea as to what's going on. No problem, Sniper Echo. Thanks for popping by and saying hello. And uh, your work is looking great. No problem, Sniper Echo. I'll see you uh, next week, hopefully. I'll be back on again on Monday next week. And again, have a good weekend and thanks for dropping by. You too, buddy. Hope you have a good weekend as well. Okay. I'm looking at my normals here. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. I'm 
I'm going to unify my normals. No problem. See you, buddy. Let's collapse all. Okay, let's try re-exporting it again now. Uh, wooden urn is what we want. We just overwrite the last one that we did. Okay, let's jump back into Substance here and uh, edit our project. Re-import that uh, urn again. That's better. <laughs> okay. And for anyone curious, that was a problem with the, uh, the the normals weren't unified correctly. That was causing a problem. All right. We do have some weird stuff in it. This is a mapping problem. Okay, let's jump back into Max again quickly. Let's. Um, we have those selected. I'm just going to do another UBW map here. I'm going to go cylindrical. I'm not going to cap it though. I'll collapse all. Now I'm going to open up my unwrap and have a look at what's going on here. Just move those out of the way. I'm going to move these up out of the zero to one space as well while I work on um, what is going on here with our mapping on our main body of the object. down another UVW map. should work for us. I don't really understand why it's not. I'm going to collapse it again. We'll uh, open up our Unwrap UVW and we're going to move these ones back into position. because of um, map seems that that's being an issue. Let's just re-export it again quickly. We'll jump back into Substance. Uh, if this doesn't work properly for me, what I'll do is we'll jump back into Unreal and finish um, attaching all of those pieces together for our square wooden railings. Yeah, no, it's still going to bring an issue. 
And I have a feeling it's something to do with the map seams that's going on here. It's causing this uh, issue that we're seeing through here. So. So I think what we'll do, I'll, I'll look at this over the weekend uh, when I get a chance. And we'll come back to it next week. Um, I really do want to get that, um, this railing section completed. So I'm going to uh, create a blueprint now. So I'm going to drag in our railing, pull it up. Uh, we'll drag in our railing ironwork here. I'm going to go into my top viewport. It'll make it easier for me to see what's going on. Where we placed it. All right, now let's get these uh, into position. We'll start uh, in the middle, I think. It'd probably be easier. I am going to. make a duplicate of that piece of geometry, and by doing that, I'm instancing it. So I'm only using the polys from that one, and the engine will remember it's a copy and just. Um, so it won't take up any more memory on the graphics card or in your PC which is what we want and that's the reason that we broke it up to begin with so that we could save memory let's just move those into position here I'm going to jump into one of my uh, other viewports so I can position it in the X and the Y correctly I'm going to jump back into my main viewport here and uh, check that. And I can see they need to go up a little bit. Okay. All right, let's uh, jump back into our top viewport. Duplicate and another duplicate. Again, let's go into a perspective viewport so we can check that, and that looks fine. Although I may move it over just a little bit more. And I think I'll move these two back over just a little bit more. Okay. Hey Rage, it's good thanks, how are you? We're just finishing getting our uh, Square banisters we were working on yesterday into uh, Unreal now. And what I'm doing here is I'm copying the ironwork, uh, duplicating just one piece of that ironwork around so that we save on our texture memory. So let's finish doing that. Let's jump back into our top view. Let's select all those pieces and duplicate them. And remember, because we're duplicating, we're only going to be using uh, the memory of one of those pieces. So we're saving on memory and making life easier for the game engine.
Let's just uh, position these properly. These two here. Whoop. I'll just move those over a bit. I'm going to jump back into my perspective viewport here so we can check that. These two have to come over a little bit, I think. Let's just do the ones on the side now. Uh, I think it's probably easier if we just grab two and duplicate those around. So we'll grab these two from the middle. And uh, make another duplicate. Take them 90 degrees. We'll make another duplicate. We'll move those ones here into the middle. And one more duplicate. And move them down to the end. Did you uh, fix the problem you were having, Rage, with um, Mudbox? Did reinstalling the program help or maybe looking at your um, drivers? I'm going to move these two uh, a little bit further forward. Okay, let's select uh, these ones. Um, Rage is asking me what programs I usually use to UV and texture. You're using Photoshop and UV layout mostly at the moment. But you go to Substance Painter and now Mudbox when you want to paint. I do my texturing in either Photoshop or Substance Painter or Mari by the Foundry. Uh, my preference is to use Mari to do my texture painting. I really like the control, uh, the artistic control I have using Mari and painting my textures in. Substance Painter is very good, but it's more procedurally generated stuff for Substance. <clears throat> so yeah, to, to do my texture painting, I prefer to use uh, Mari by the Foundry. And they do give you a giveaway a free version on their website if you're not using it for commercial purposes that you can download and install. Uh, it's used a lot in film work and cinema work, so my my preference is Mari. And as far as um, UV layout goes, <clears throat> pardon me, I tend to use uh, Max's built-in UV layout editor. If I'm not using Max, then I will use um, Unfold 3D or UV layout. There are two other programs that you can load your models into to do um, UV layout mapping but I try as much as I can to use Max's built-in UV layout tool if I find that I can't get what I want with Max then I'll either use Unfold 3D or UV layout um, the interface on this program is much nicer to use than UV layout UV layout looks a bit clunky but it's very powerful so either of those two to do UV mapping or Max and as far as texture painting goes generally Mari or Substance Painter, but usually Murray, and Photoshop. Oh no, the problem's still there, that's, a, that's unfortunate. So long as I guess it doesn't really get in the way with the, of what you're doing, it should be, it, it looks more like a visual glitch than anything, it doesn't look like it's a problem being created on the mesh, it's just a visual hiccup that's uh, in the program for some reason. So if you can work around it, then yeah, that's, that's a cool way to go. 
But if you want to, if you're, if you're only using um, Mudbox to do texture painting and you're not creating anything commercially, so if you're a student or you're a home user, go to um, Foundry's website and download Mari. Um, this is something that um, Sniper Echo is working on. Um, I'll just pull it up really quickly for you. Uh, you probably heard of it, you probably know of it, but for anyone else, If you go to, uh, if you just type the Foundry Mari, you can go to their uh, website here and download uh, a free version of their software, which is, as far as I know, I haven't used it. I use a commercial version, but it's fully functional. It just means you can't release anything commercially that you make using it. Um, it's not the free trial version. There's another version here where they let you download the full software and use it non-commercially and it's uh, incredibly good software <laughs> it is expensive guys if you wanted to buy it but um, like I said look for the free version there is a, a free version there used to be anyway and download the free version and install it if, you, if you're doing texture painting because uh, it's very good very good you can use huge texture sizes which is why it's used in film So yeah, go to their website and have a look. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that they still give away a free version. Can't see it off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's here somewhere. Oh, you haven't heard of Mari? Oh, definitely, uh, particularly if you're doing any film work or where you, if you want to create anything with really large textures. Mari, you can go up to huge textures, like uh, Substance Painter, you can only go up to 8K textures. Mari, you can go up to 64K. There really isn't much of a limit apart from the, your, uh, the amount of memory you have in your PC. Uh, and it, it's very good. Uh, and I love Mari. I use it as much as I can. I, it allows me to paint in my textures exactly the way I want them. Uh, not that Substance Painter is bad, it's just different. The interface is a bit different. I, I prefer the interface to substance uh, to Mari than Substance Painter, but they're both pretty similar. It's just just a different way of working. That's all. So yeah, do go go to the Foundry's website and check it out. I'm sure that there's still a free version. I don't think it's this try version. That's the one that they they do give you like a 30 day trial, but there is a free version they're giving away. It may only be Mari three instead of three point two. Yeah, it may be version 3 that, they, that that comes with the free version, not version 3.2. So you may just want to check that out. I'm pretty sure they haven't stopped that yet. It's uh, a free version that you can download and, and use for non-commercial purposes. It won't expire after 30 days or anything like that. Oh, you think Substance Painter's interface is intimidating? A Substance Painter's interface is really... Um, yeah, they do things backwards with their sliders, and I'm not used to that. Like, I'm, I'm used to going down to be zero and going up to be one. But they seem to be flipped around in Substance Painter and on some of their sliders, and it's a bit weird. So that, that can not, uh, confuse me at times. But Mari's interface is not probably as intimidating as Substance's, but it's quite complex as well. Like, Mari has a lot of power as a texture painting software, so you can do a lot of things with the program um, that can take a little bit of time just to work out where they put stuff. But it, I, I find it a little bit easier to use than Substance Painter. Not that there's anything wrong with Substance Painter's interface, it's just that they do a lot of work with sliders here, and yeah, I'm, not, I'm never a fan of this type of thing where you work with sliders to change your um, values. I know a lot of software use it, Max even has sliders, but I don't know, they really, really go all out in Substance Painter with their sliders here. It's like anything, I guess, the, the more you use it, the more you get used to it. But do give Mari a try, because it is very good software, and it's uh, one that I use all the time. That's my preferred program for doing 3D uh, texture painting, is uh, Mari. Let's just copy these last ones. Or duplicate them, I should say. 
And again, we're doing this duplication so we save on memory in the computer or our game engine or whatever it is you're doing. If you can duplicate your meshes, always do because you're going to save a lot of uh, computer memory. So let's just jump back into our main viewport here. We haven't completely finished this um, railing section because we still have to add the uh, these pieces on the top. And I, but I want to check what's going on with my texturing here before I do that. So we have our railing section created. And like I said, we've saved a lot of polygon and memory usage by reusing these uh, wrought iron pieces just by duplicating them around the outside. But aside from that, we have our railing section complete. Uh, normally here I'd create a blueprint, but I'm not going to do that here. I just want to... Uh, Alright, I, I will create the blueprint actually. And to do that, all you do is you select uh, everything in your scene. Again, this is more for the benefit of anyone new to Unreal uh, than people that have used it. They will have already know how to do this. So I'm just going to go around and select all the uh, pieces that make up my railing section here. I just undid that because I accidentally moved the mesh when I didn't want to. I think I did it again. So we have all of our pieces of geometry selected to make up the uh, railing section here, apart from these two that I've forgotten. There we go. Gotta make sure I do have them all selected. Yes, I do. We're going to come up to our um, bl uh, blueprints here and we're going to convert selected components to blueprint class. We're going to tell it where we want it to save our blueprint. We're going to put it into our blueprints folder. We can leave it at the default name. We can rename it later. I love Unreal. I've used Unreal quite a bit in the past when it was UDK and uh, yeah, I love using the Unreal Engine. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> They've done a wonderful job at uh, making a game engine. It's really, really nice. The lighting is just superb. Epic have done a great job. Uh, Ray says he was so used to Kismet in Unreal 3 that blueprints took a while to understand. Yeah, they, they don't. Blueprints are, uh, again, for anyone that's not doesn't know, are, are, new, are new to Unreal Engine 4. They weren't. They didn't exist prior to Unreal Engine 4, um, and they were a bit different from Kismet, but they're much more powerful in the long run and much easier to use. Um, but I agree, it takes a little while to get used to using blueprint. But we've used it in this instance just to put all of our pieces together so they're all in one object. It's all just one object so that we can easily place it now when we want to start building our um, level in Unreal. So we have our uh, wrought iron and wood railing section done apart from the um, decorative tops here that I'm, I'm going to look at over the weekend if I get a chance. Uh, created up in a blueprint so it's easy for us to move around if we need to. I think we may leave it there for today though guys. Um, I want to thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, I will be back again on Monday next week. I stream on a Monday, a Tuesday and a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. Um, if you're not sure when I'm going live, you can keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoz3D because I always post 15 minutes before I go live to Twitter. Or if there's ever a problem and I can't stream, I'll post to my Twitter page to let you guys know why. But I'll be back again on Monday next week at 5 p.m. You're quite welcome, Rage. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. It's always great to chat to you guys in chat. 
Um, like I said, I'll be back again on Monday next week at 5 p.m. Again, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you, Rage, for popping in and saying hello. Um, I will uh, see you guys on Monday next week. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. See ya.